Let's Kiki with the Bros, hosted by Brothers in Unity, BIU of Equitas Health. Kiki with the Bros centers honest conversations around the lives of the BIPOC community, the struggles, the success, and the taboos. Brothers in Unity is an affirmative space of Equitas Health where MSM of color can come together, share like-minded experiences through centering conversations and their day-to-day lives. We will uncover the issues, struggles, and the success of the BIPOC community. Follow Brothers in Unity on social media for updates on Affinity Space and Kiki with the Bow. <laughs> Kiki with the Bros um, podcast. Um, let's just start with some introductions. My name is Fred. Uh, what happened? You already said mm-hmm. it, it is a little hot. It's here. probably the lights <laughs> right over there. Um, my name is Francisco. I am the prevention program coordinator, but I've been working with Brothers in Unity the last almost three years. So we're here doing a podcast. So what's up? Um, yeah. My name's Chris. I am a prevention specialist um, under BIU. I've been working for Equitas for almost a year now. So yeah, it's been a good journey. My name is Casey Carter. I'm also uh, under Brothers in Unity uh, slash Prevention Specialist. I also I work in the Dayton District. Um, so, yeah. Okay, y'all, loosen up a little bit. Y'all, I mean, what's the <laughs> say? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the topic today, you know, our first introduction episode, um, I think it's important that, we, you know, we just get to th- some things early on. Get into um, I think it's important w- occupying spaces and the work that we do, that we talk about the impact of drugs and sex in queer spaces. And why do we believe drug use um, when it comes to people of color, but specifically MSM, so men who have sex with men or same gender loving men of color, however you want to you know, use that acronym, um, is so prominent in black and brown spaces. Um, particularly black and brown queer spaces. Um, So we just open up with that dialogue. For me, personally, I think that um, as somebody who started recently, not recently because I'm 27 now, but when I was like 22, when I started navigating queer spaces more, and that was really my first time ever seeing the intersectionality of both existing. Um, You know, I have family that you know, has been involved in drug use, but I never didn't really realize um, how sex and drugs play such a huge part until I really started occupying queer spaces. And that's not to say, like, it's just a gay man's problem, but um, that's the community I occupy. So we can just open up with that. Um, I personally, um, I feel like there's a lot of factors that go into um, why it's so big in um, these spaces, I feel like a lot of it comes from where they come from and their background. Um, growing up, if they were living in poverty or didn't have that support from their parents, so they look to the streets um, as far as like hustling and stuff. Like that's big, probably the biggest thing to me. So you mean like when you say hustling, you mean like slinging dope or like doing it? Um, <laughs> hustling or like you know like. You have to, I don't want to say prostitution or... Oh, girl, you went made a left. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that all is a, comes into effect. Um, they get on these, they hooked on, get hooked on these drugs um, so young, and then it just progresses later on in life. Um, yeah. What about you, Casey? I think it's, uh, and it's unfortunate. I think for us, it's whatever the easiest drug they can get their hands on. Okay. And saying that to say, like, in their community space, whichever, whatever it is, if it's easier for them to get their hands on weed, they're going to get their hands on weed. If they can get their hands on Coke, they can get their hands on Coke. If they can get on alcohol, they can get alcohol. And I think they do that because they already have this DL attitude or mindset. So they take these drugs or do these drugs so that they can just forget about what other people think and they can be themselves. And then... Mm. That's why I think they do it in our spaces because it's easy for the it's easy access. So do y'all think do y'all have the same experience in terms of it being pretty prominent in spaces that you occupy? Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And do you think it's like normalized or do you think it's like taboo, like the conversation or even the acts or like 
How do you? How's that experience think, for you all? I'm, I think it's more taboo because mm-hmm. everybody don't talk about their drug of choice. Okay. So, and I think because they don't talk about it, they don't want to be judged because of it. Because of it, because somebody might judge you like, "Oh, you smoke weed? I would never." But that person might, you know, do math or something. So each person to their I think it's own a, drug. Yeah, I think it's a lot of shame around it. I think the first, you know, in, from my experience, like, the first thing the girls want to shade you on and say is like, oh, girl, you do, that's why you're doing this, mm-hmm. putting up your nose. It's a shame. I think it's a lot mm-hmm. of shame around the conversation. <laughs> yeah. So that creates, like, a lot of taboo. But yeah. then I think that there's a flip side to it. I think there's people... Mm-hmm. People, but in this case, specifically when it comes to gay men, that don't care. Um, so I think, which, you know what, for me, from my perspective, I think you should allow people to do what they want to do, as like we do work in like harm reduction and like that's that space. But um, also realizing that we as a community sometimes lend to the shame around drugs and sex and the language that we use, um, especially when people get upset. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we work... call them okay. crackhead or something. Crackhead, yeah. like, okay. cokehead, all that. So, Tina, you do Tina. Like, that's an insult. That's a way that people insult each other. So, I think working in these harm reduction spaces has taught me that you meet people where they're at, but also not creating a space of shame because we don't understand people's circumstances sometimes or, like, why they tend to lead Mm -hmm. to that Mm -hmm. so you know i think that that's just some food for thought um what impact has drugs and sex had on you so you know whether when i say that i'm gonna ask that question (laughs) um whether for me i'll speak for myself so i've had friends family members particularly like friends navigating queer life um that have like especially when i was younger that tend to whatever path their life went on in terms of drug use um uh, we do know a lot of times drug use does lend to hypersexuality and again i don't really try to judge people do what you want to do um but those relationships have become fractured primarily because of the drug use and it because of the activity sometimes that lends to happen or Sometimes, you know, situation, situational things happen and it does become a fracture in our relationship. So that's kind of what I mean. Not asking y'all personally, like, what kind of drugs y'all doing? I mean, y'all can, y'all can ask or, you know, answer that question if y'all would like, if y'all, you know. Um, I feel personally, I've just grown up, like, multiple family members have been um, drug usage. Um, I have an uncle that's been in and out of N.A. Um, my whole life. So I've, like, experienced, like, that aspect of it. Now, I feel like in gay spaces and when you get around, like, certain friends, like, you do feel, like, that peer pressure um, of, like, oh, so you're seeing your friends doing this or you see your friends doing that. So you're, like, and they're, like, oh, do it, do it. And then you feel obligated to do it. I feel like I've definitely been in those type of situations where, like, I've done drugs. And um, I don't want to say I was pressured, but I guess you do have that peer pressure. And you're, like, oh, okay, this is the cool thing to do. Um, And, like, that's... that's why we should never like knock anybody if that does certain drugs because like like you said earlier like you just never know what they're going through and i personally wouldn't want to do that either because i've been through my own struggles um so just i guess more or less creating a safe place um for them to feel welcomed and they're not being judged on the like the type of drugs they're doing um that's really good um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I think it's a lot of times if there is pressure there. I don't think that's OK to acknowledge that pressure or peer pressure exists, mm-hmm. because especially like when you're younger and you are trying to again navigate life as at least for us as gay men, that's a whole different experience. Mm-hmm. So you tend to make friends with people or um find people that have that shared experience with you that maybe don't always have the best intentions or like have their own traumas or own experiences in life. And it's not necessarily that you want to fit in, but um, it's kind of almost like a social experiment. Like you're almost like, you know, I'm here. Mm -hmm. These things are, this is what everyone's doing. Is this part of the lifestyle? So I think a lot of people succumb to those pressures. And I think especially when you're young and impressionable, Mm -hmm. that's normal. And 
Yeah, I think that there shouldn't be a whole lot of shame in that. I think there's a lot of shame around drugs and then how we talk about sexuality and people, Mm -hmm. whether it's the use of drugs or just like in general when it comes to sexuality and shame, that's really, really prominent in our community. So why? So outside of that, just out of shame, like people creating social pressures and things of that nature, why is this conversation so taboo? Like even us talking about it, it's probably going to be like, why are they talking about oh, oh, drugs yeah. and sex? Like, but and I don't think for me, I don't want us to identify that as just the identity of like black gay men, mm-hmm. black queer men, because it's not the no one's monolithic, but it's something that is prominent and it does exist. I think it's more like generational. Like our parents, our grandparents never really even talked about sex um, or even like the drug usage. So like it just like instilled on upon us that like not talk about it um but i feel like the more you talk about it the more people are aware what's going on in the society especially i don't want to bring it back to the gay community but um like tina is really big in the black queer community okay what's tina so the girls don't know oh tina is meth (laughs) i'm like what is i don't know tuesdays without tina that's the equitas health program plug in (laughs) (laughs) um and that brings me back to like you just never know what people are going through like obviously like no one wants to be hooked on tina or like fentanyl or pills or anything of the hardcore drugs but it's just like what life's given them you know yeah I mean, I get it. I'm just like, you know, my thing is, girl, if you want to do Tina, that's your business. Like, all right, let's just do I it mean, safely. I'm more so because I was in a situation. Okay. Where, let them know, know, I was, you know, they said, you want to smoke? I'm like, yeah, let's mm-hmm. smoke. We, I thought we were smoking marijuana. No. Uh, it was they, lace. Yeah, mm-hmm. they was on to something else. I'm like, so yeah, yeah. it's like, so it's like now you got to, you got to identify what you smoke. Because... Smoking ain't the same. We we either smoking cigarettes, we smoking weed, or we smoking Tina, or maybe putting Tina in weed. No, I didn't know that. You can no, or you put, put co- you could put like coke or coke in there, and then it like basically turns to crack. I don't know nothing about none of that. All I know is who was it that you were smoking on the ganja? I, it it that? wasn't that, but it was. It didn't smell like marijuana. I'm like, I don't know what this is, oh. but I don't want it. Oh, it was like a like a blunt. It wasn't like out of a pipe or anything. It was out the pipe. Oh, so. but I mean, but I've smoked weed out of a pipe too, so. Oh, like out of a bong? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. But it didn't smell like that. So I'm like, I know this ain't weed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah they, <laughs> so, they got you. Yeah. So, got you, girl. But I think, <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's normalizing the conversation because most people don't, don't, like, I'm ignorant because clearly I didn't know. I had to go through it to be able to know now to know if I'm going to do something, somebody say, let's smoke. I need to ask that regardless if I know them or not. Like, what you smoking on? Okay. Because you don't know what that person got. Even if they is smoking a blunt, you don't know what they got in there. Um, I think that's like the same thing of like being straightforward with people when it comes to like getting tested or like their sexual yeah. health wellness history. Like it's conversation that we're not having. Like, girl, what's the last time you got tested? You know, or like, you know, tell your trade on Jack. Like, you know, can I see your results? I bet but you people don't want to have like those conversations. In our community, like when I say our community, like people that work in our industry, yeah, we can make that comment. We can have those conversations and not yeah. be offended. Mm-hmm. You ain't about to go to nobody in the street and say, "When last time you got tested?" That's None very true. Like that's not table true. talk at yeah. Union. Because yeah. like, now you're about you to know. shade them because. They don't know what you're going to think. Well, also, and they don't want to, like, come across as, like, oh, we're, I'm starting this awkward conversation and I don't want to ruin the moment. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and all, yeah, that part, ruining the moment. That's always what I hear is, like, I don't want to ruin the moment. Like, girl, why don't you put a condom on? I didn't want to ruin the ruin moment. The moment. <laughs> <laughs> you in the you heat better. Of, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, the moment, the moment is over. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. Like the girls mm-hmm. be in the heat of the moment. That's on Tink. And they just want to, you know, <laughs> just go, ahead. go to Pound Town. Without nothing. Without asking but, any and then, questions. You know, I get it. Uh, I mean, sometimes it happens, but you know, yeah, we yes, have. To, no but trade. our goal is to make it more aware that we need to, even in the heat of the moment, we can just say, "You got a condom." And you <laughs> yeah. ain't even gotta go deep. It's either yes or no. And if you say no, you like all right, decision. you know, mm-hmm. now you have the choice to make that decision to say, "I'm either gonna trust this person because I'm this fool and I'm drunk enough. I'm just gonna go right. with it," or I'm gonna be like, "Uh, since you don't have one, I got another question to ask you." And based off that question, it depends on whether we're going to go forward or not. Um, I feel like the other question, though, should be, uh, are you going to, the other question is, when's the last time you got tested? Mm-hmm. I feel like that should automatically be um, asked. 
But if I'm using a condom, but you have why, to think, Chris, like not everyone, you probably, you're thinking from like, I work in sexual health, but Correct. before you were doing right. that, would you asking everyone? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm like, no. That's what I'm saying. Not going to happen. So, you know, you're right. I did get out of that mentality too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. girl, and some people just, I, I can't cuss, right? Because <laughs> I was just trying to censor Some people just want to like, <laughs> yeah, no shade. They, no shade. Yeah. Like, they, they just want to They ain't worried about, they're worried about like the consequences if later. and later. Yeah. If it may happen. And I think that that's like risky. It that's is, what it is. You know, and we are already vulnerable to and susceptible, and there's that stigma that follows mm-hmm. um, gay men, specifically black MSM, mm-hmm. men of color. But. Um, I think in human nature, people just want to have sex, and sometimes that's raw sex. Like, I mean, but, but it it's, yeah. it's okay to want to do it, but why we just can't be sure that we both? Well, you could be okay. sure, but I'm just saying, like that conversation, like we have to be realistic. I mean, like, we are. I mean, you know, the it's not a conversation nobody's gonna have on the first day, yeah, even on a sneaky link. You ain't about to say, hey. Yeah, and that time you got to we it. might ask because we like okay. We do I mean, work yeah, we day. will, and then you that's know. automatically a turn off. They're gonna be like, no. But yeah, if they say no, then what? You, what you want? Papers? Yeah, see, but you know, I'm a very and, see. I had to realize also that everyone is like me. Yeah, that's yeah. A, something that I've had to like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, that? yeah, I'm not, very not, straight. That's not common. I'm People very, ain't ho- walking around with papers like I'm very. I'm negative chart now. Baby, yeah, let me put up that my chart and screenshot it. <laughs> that's I need to, I need to, that's so, email your yo, doctor right I do, now. I do get what you're saying because what Fran said, I definitely wasn't asking these type of questions before I mm-hmm. was having sex. And I why mean, wasn't you asking, like, just like, out of, you just was like, was it these things or was it just like, oh, it's not really, it's out of sight, out of mind? I think it's more of out of sight, out of mind thing. Like, if you're not really, like, um, educated on these type of things, mm, right. you're not really going to ask the right questions to, like, mm. get the right answers. I think, yeah, it goes to back to, like, Health literacy and like mm-hmm. we have to remember like sex ed taught to queer men is non-existent um i learned how to fleet watching youtube tutorials and my older mm-hmm. home girls telling me child this is how you do it you don't do it like this uh, yeah so <laughs> baby you don't That's it's very much about community care and looking out for each other it's fleet care you never, you never, you never, not community care. Fleet care. Well, you do need to take some care when you are about to flee. Right? I mean, you you don't. Oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh well. Uh, what is that? You don't know how to. You've never heard of fleeting? Wait a second. You never like clean. You mean like using an enema? Oh, okay. I'm I'm used to dushing. That's what I hear. Oh, dushing. Okay. But when you use the proper word. Yeah. When you say fleeting, I'm like, well, what is that? Well, it's called a fleet. On the well, but you got a you got a ball like one of the ball things. Who? I ain't never bought no box or none of that. What's okay, ball? you not, okay. Oh, oh we, I get he it. He don't know what the he's not hip to the the, the utensils. Well, he probably don't. The fleeting utensils or the dishing utensils. I've seen it, but I don't, I've never experienced it. Uh, never did. Yeah, because he. What you trying to say, Chris? I'm just saying. I'm like, I'm flabbergasted right now. Like, he what said, are y'all talking on, okay, about? Let me get. Well, this steer the conversation. You can steer. buy. Hold on a second. Okay. No, Don't you can buy it. an enema, it's, and it's a fleet. But for but I thought but it's I've literally on it. I've seen it before. It's for green. Women. No, baby, there's an anal dish. Yeah. Oh, you're not really supposed to put the liquid inside you though. You just like dump it out and you put. Water. Yeah, there's like a saline that you're not supposed to use. You don't want to put that up there. But well, so, as a man. Well, well, anybody who's having oh, anal as, sex. Oh, okay. It can, they, oh, because it's not for your actual... No, there's an anal dish. Like, really, it's not for... I don't know if it was made for, like, to have anal sex. I think it was made if you're, like, constipated. But, so, there's, like, the, the most recreational enemas that people use. Shout out to anybody who's watching it and be dushing. Um, dushing flea in, <laughs> Mr. Clean. Um, so, basically, so, most people use the small little dollars... Fleets. So when people it says say fleet I on the bottle, ready, that's what they mean. Uh, yeah. Wait. What? What is going on? Casey? Yeah. Hold on. I mean, <laughs> he's been married for. I mean, he married. I will be. Shout oh yeah, you're, you're, you're getting me out. Yeah. Well, I ain't but good. I mean, good. I've been out of the game for a while. But well, okay, hold on. Oh. Yeah, Casey, we gotta bring it to us. Well, you don't have to be in the game to know. <laughs> okay, but come back to what I was saying about fleeting. <laughs> so basically, there's a fleet enema that uh-huh. most people use. That um, 
I mean, it's like the dollar, what, dollar fifty one. How much? Mm-hmm. Is, how much? Yeah, dollar fifty. You know, the good old reliable. You go to Kroger's, Target. You know, you can get a four pack. My friend bought me a four pack for my birthday one time. You know, it's a joke. So it's a key. Um, Kiki with the bros. Um, so <laughs> That's yeah, exactly what that was. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, you get the like a four pack, or you can get every whatever one you want, and you jump out the saline. Most people don't use the saline wash that's in there. I don't know if it's saline wash or whatever it is. Just don't put it up there. It, it's just With, no. Whatever that you is. Wants, like, you know, nice, you know, lukewarm luke, luke, water. Lukewarm water to clean up there. You know, do what you've got to do. Not to be too, you know. You. I mean, you just do it until the water's clear when it comes out. And, you know, even if it came out clear, you might want to keep doing it time. again. <sighs> yeah, like it's not. You know, you make sure do you don't do some backflips, you know, maybe uh-huh. squirt in the mirror. Yeah. What? Yeah, make sure everything is getting up into those intestines. They have yeah, different ones, too. Like he said earlier, there's yes. a bulb. I personally have, like, a shower connection. But I heard that that's, like, a lot of pressure up there. You don't have to put the whole... The whole pressure. Because there's different head. Like, I have and, one. I just have attached it. Do you do that in the like, shower? I mean, I... But it no. don't come... No, baby. No. I just it go into the... You the put toilet. it up there, and then you go well, to the toilet. Well, he said he got a shower one. Yeah, you in the shower, the head's from the shower, and then, like, you put it... You do, you'll do, and then you get out the... Out the, the bathtub. Yeah. Oh. And you go to the toilet. It's right there. Okay, I well, that's it. Well, we just... This, yeah, we're giving you bottoming... Bottom one and one. Um, You know... Mm-hmm. I mean, Chris doesn't know nothing about bottoming, but... I'm a top. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so... Um, <laughs> for real. So, like, how do y'all think we create spaces without shame around the use of, well, drugs and sex? Well, the act of sex or drugs and the interse- intersectionality of drugs and sex together. Um, how does we create spaces that are not shameful for people to talk openly and engage with conversations where they feel like, I know people who don't even talk to their homegirls mm-hmm. about who they messing around with, what they do in their free time. That's how I found, like, to me, from my experience, I thought I'm a pretty a welcoming spirit. You know, I feel like I'm, uh, you know, pretty open to things. They say you really closed off. Not even that. Like, I've had friends where I found out things about them, and everyone does things at the closed doors, but that I thought we had a relationship mm-hmm. to where I got the same. You know, damn oh, girl, I found like, this oh, out I the street. We was like this. I thought I this just was, found was my bestie, like, oh. girl. Like we talk about everything else, girl. We talk about everyone else's tea. Never said a word. Um, but they didn't feel comfortable sharing those things with me, which I felt yes. I'd. Who? Yes. SDS. No J. Look it up if you don't know what that means. Um. Yeah. So I always thought I was a welcoming person or like a personable person. That I've just had relationships in the past where I just was like kind of surprised that they didn't feel comfortable speaking to me. And I was like, I had to look at myself like, girl, do you are you not cultivating a space or do they feel like you're going to shame them? So I had to check myself. But have mm. any of y'all had that? Um, I feel like personally, like everyone does feel like that shame around sex, like where I feel like I've never like said certain things to my friends because I personally didn't want to get judged. Um, but I feel like it's more like it might not even be you personally. It might be the person that doesn't feel mm-hmm. um, comfortable, but it's them breaking that barrier with themselves and not just like other people. Like they, the person has to feel comfortable admitting or just acknowledging um, what they're going through or what they've what happened, you know? Um, okay. Yeah, like. You can create the space for people, but are willing are people willing to open up and be vulnerable too, you know? I feel like there's both sides of that question. Right. I definitely agree. I think vulnerability is something that's not taught to gay men. It, I think it's definitely not taught. Right? But I think when you have, like me and my friends, we, we can talk about it. Mm-hmm. Like, we can talk about it. Okay. Like Y'all be talking about everything. Talk about it. Like, oh... Do you be like, okay, girl, like that's a bit. I much. mean, but you, but we I'm can down. we can key key about it, but but you know it's 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 no judgment. Like you know, you might say like, oh, bitch, you know, I painted a little bit. Oh, wait, <laughs> exactly, exactly. that's why they you need. But you know, if you did, but we have, but we're, but we have that space to where okay. we are comfortable enough to to say that and not feel judged because. Yeah, like this, my friends. I, can I mean, about yeah, it. you know, like I, it, it happens. Yeah, girl. I mean, you know what you're dealing with. So I don't I, apparently so. But I mean, to each his own. But yeah. you know, same things happen. Oopsie. It is what it is. Um. Yeah. So I ran out of stuff on these cue cards. I so do have a question now. though. Um. I think it goes back to like kind of the first question. 
Well, it's not really a question. Um, about you know, like sex and drugs and how do we how does it get into these spaces? Mm-hmm. I feel like another big thing is um, our older generation, like the older gays, praying on <laughs> the praying. Praying. <laughs> they be creeps. Um, not praying. all of them. Not shout all of them. I'm sorry. To, shout out to my older gays. Shout out to my, you know, we're well, not even I'm older. Say, I'm not say no names. Not shout out to, not even older, you know, seasoned. You know, it's a blessing. What's, what's considered to get older? Seasoned? So I, I, I'm going to say that. Let me preface this. It's a blessing y'all to get older. Y'all both in y'all 20s. Chris is barely in her 20s. Okay, still. you're really trying. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been out of my 20s. So what season to y'all? Season probably like full 50s. No, season 60s. in gay years is like 35, girl. Let's be Damn, real. Damn, I'm, yeah. I'm about to be 35. Uh, Do I look season you to know, you? No shade. No, but you've been around the block. Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Well, not literally, but you know, maybe, <laughs> you, maybe around the corner. I, mean, yeah, you know, I know about a few things. Yeah. I didn't know about that fleeting, but I'm surprised. You ain't never heard. Bro, I heard a seven. dushing, okay. but I mean, I've never. When you broke it down, I've never, I now you have heard a, it bro- like oh, yeah. I mean, I heard people way. doing it, like you know. But now that you broke it, I'm like, oh, you so that's what that means. They- for yourself, like one time for the one. Well, if he ain't about to be doing it, no, you know, it's there. good to clean yourself out. I don't have a desire to do that. Okay, well, that's your, that's your body, your choice. Um, he, huh? He probably has regular... Um, Bowel movement? Yes. Girl, okay. <laughs> you don't? Because you're you doing it. Huh? Uh, <laughs> 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 top. I am the top. Stop playing me. <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> well, like, shout out to my tops out there. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the tops. Um, yeah, for sure. Actually, shout out to my verses. Okay, shout out to the verses. I feel like everyone is kind people. of verse in a way. I mean, I grew, you know. I what think, is a verse? Let's talk about that. What do you consider a verse? Oh, uh, well. They're about to eat us up on the downside. So, well, there's people take it. Different. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I if we like going to talk ver- about it, I, I mean, like what's a verse? A verse? I feel like. Because I feel like I'm versatile, but. You know, shout out to the older gays because they always told me, like, girl, you about to be versed when you get older, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, when you turn, because, you know, when I start. You going to get over it. Cause I, yeah, because you, when you're younger, you be like, you want to, from my vantage point and my experience, now that I'm becoming one of the elders and I'm around the younger girls. You, I mean, you, you ain't going to let one of those young girls climb your back. I, I was even about to say, uh, go inside and I was going to say, well, it they, said- it's very like they want to stick, like they feel like. I don't know if it's like, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, not gender norm. Well, yeah, there's like gender mm-hmm. norms in like the gay community. gay community, which is very strange to me. Or they feel like they got to stick, if the guy's not too masculine, they're like, oh, he can't climb my back. And you know, I get it, preference or whatever, but what's your preference rooted in? Mm-hmm. No see, no chases. Like, what's your, pre- <laughs> what's your preference really rooted in? And I think there's like, when people use the word preference, I always wonder, like, girl, what is that coming? You want to, you want a piece of tray climb your back, but you mm-hmm. don't want with the femme girls climb your back. Girl, just say that. Girl, just keep it real. Like, <laughs> that's what, that's you want, or a butch that. queen. Yeah, no. Um, but, you know, a butch queen to you? You, we got to be in a relationship. Gotcha. That's automatically. So I don't. What happened? I don't just. I don't do it. It's been do what? Yeah, at least ten years since I've done it. So I'm and I never done. Why that. you whispering, girl? I said butch queen. Oh, you not what oh. about a butch queen? Oh no, though? I oh. never did that. No, no. Oh, no. you're talking about bottoming. Yeah, period. Oh, gotcha. uh, we I got a confusion here. You oh no. Oh, uh, you don't do that unless you're in a relationship. What's a butch queen? Oh, Casey, what's okay, hold on, let's yeah. go back to the verses. Yeah, okay, hold on, let's talk about verses, then we'll get to Butch Queens, because there's a lot of versy Butch Queens. <sighs> anyways, um, <laughs> so I think that ver. so anyways, like I was saying, like, when I was younger, they was like, oh, girl, you're going to become verse and all this other stuff. Does You just get young right now being stupid. Um, you know, best of both worlds, I guess. I don't know, I wouldn't consider myself a verse, but I would definitely say that my what I like is different than I was when I was younger. That's what they, that's what they were saying. Like, so most, I realized in the gay community, m- most gay people that are not DEO come out as bottoms. And then, <laughs> and it's unfortunate when, ah. as the more they come out, the more yes, they experience, oh, cause then they start topping and then like, oh, you know, they, you like, they might find that one person that like, oh, I want you to. Top me, and then they start topping and top. And I only say that because in my life, I've heard this conversation over and over, and I see it. Like, oh, you're a big old bottom, but 
Five years later, are you topping? I, and I can't, I Just can't, them my gender mind can't norm. Them gender norms be tearing the girls yeah. up because, girl, I be knowing the most masculine and we'll gay men. Right okay. Right and then it's because the they girls, started but off just like, you probably shouldn't pre They started off topping. They started off like, oh, I ain't gonna never do that. I ain't gonna never do that. But they started inching and inching and inching. Now you're bending it open. Well, maybe they burst busting now. it open. But I feel like that comes to like, what is a verse? Like Chris said, like, what is a verse, honey? No, like, ver- I feel like for me, a verse is somebody. Do what you want to do in the bedroom. That do not mind. Mind doing both, doing both in a certain sense. Because I mean, you don't. I don't think penetration to both partners means you're versatile. No, I think being versatile. You're being versatile means I'm a free, not a free spirit. But, you, know, <laughs> you you can mess with me from head to toe. Okay, you know, whatever you there's no do, boundaries. Can, there's no boundaries or limits. besides that one. Oh, like okay, yeah, yeah. Because well, that, because. Because that's a, that's an understanding. I think like some guy. Because I, you know because I, because there's straight dudes that say you know I'm I'm a top but I'll let you lick my dude. ass or I mean you know, there's a top <laughs> that say I'll let you lick my ass. Well, would you, you consider him verse? No, oh, I wouldn't consider him gay either. Well, you said a top or would you say did a you top, say he did say straight, oh right? yeah he no, is not guy. straight I'm sorry not straight. not straight but a top dude that is say no, I'll let you like they buy eight. and sorry, lick, they but what he let he let you do everything but him so you wouldn't consider him versatile no because he don't. So, in your mind, no, I first it was I only know. penetration and penetration. I think it's subjective, clearly. I, mean, it could be subjective, <laughs> and it, I think it's in subjective, the sense of the clearly. Way talking about it, yeah. I mm. think there's a lot of guys just is like their verse or whatever, but they they're very like I'm not top. I will only bottom for a certain type of guy. It goes back to them gender norms, mm-hmm. and knocking the girls upside the head. Like I just think it's always, but you know, it also is like I really stopped like trying to figure it out too mm-hmm. with guys like. They all over the place. Like gay men are, it, like when it comes to dating or talk, you know. Shout out to my gay men, but it be all over the place sometimes. So like I was like, don't even care because guys, I know guys that I've talked to or dated or met, messed around with that, you know, someone may find out or say something to me or I might key in with somebody, and they're like, girl, I thought he was a big old bottom, and the whole time he's my top to me. me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're like, like, oh no, that's terrible. We oh okay, I'm like, what's you talking about? Oh um. Um, yeah, but also I feel like what you're saying, is that, I feel like it goes back to... Is that to, too long? Oh. Okay. I feel like even like the gender norms where it goes back to like bottoms don't like when their tops have bottomed before. I feel like that's... Oh, like, yeah. It's that's just, the thing. And I think that takes it back to when it, he said about, you know, uh, bottoms don't want the girls to come their back. They only want a masculine yeah, man. Yeah. So they or they only want a masculine man or a DL dude. They just can't. It's so weird. It's and it's oh, crazy. Let me say that. I'm sorry. Overall, no you just like to you just <laughs> like to be penetrated, no and it don't matter who really. I feel like if you really liking somebody and you're vibing with somebody, like it doesn't matter if they're masculine or not. But, but that's why what? I consider myself versed because in a relationship, I don't mind doing that. But out here in the streets, absolutely not. So hold on. Uh, when I get to get in your business, that's okay. But. You, so you do, so you're burst in your relationship. You're currently in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Shout out to KC. He's getting married, what, next year? Mm-hmm. Next year. Uh, yeah. Which, so, you know, I don't, I think this, this is something that's normal. But normal, I'm more top in my relationship okay. than I am Okay, because I was going to ask, because you didn't know nothing about Fleet, yeah, so no. I was confused. He, like. So, <laughs> in my relationship, you know, we have conversations. Like, I want you to ask for it. Like, that won't happen. Uh, I'm not, because uh, that's, that's I don't not yearn thing. for that. Oh, I, I don't, what you need. I don't so desire like, for that. But partner wants because you to do I it. love you, okay. I will do this for you uh, okay. occasionally uh, when you want it. But it ain't going to be no... One time for the one. Yeah, it ain't going to be no two days in a row. Not going to happen. Okay. okay. That, okay. That makes sense. I feel the same way. Like, if my partner wanted me to do the opposite, I probably would, too. Yeah, so, I mean, that's when I Go say, ahead, what's you your, what you mean when you say first? for him because you're a top. Yeah. Well, you get what we're trying to say. You get it. Yeah, okay, so... That's a lot. But, uh, so I just, yeah, I feel like for me, I stopped really. So we go back to Butch Queen because you said you didn't know what a Butch yeah, Queen was. So Butch Queen, shout out to my Butch Queen. Shout out to the Butch uh, Queen. That's my favorite type of gay man. Me too. I, well, okay, this I, I can say that right. Like that's my favorite kind. I mean, you got to date. Right. So I'd be all because Butch Queens is like a gay man that's in touch with his femininity and his masculinity. Mm-hmm. Like has a good balance. Whatever you find is a ba- good balance for so you and your queen? preference. No. What would I be considered? Uh, Casey is a butch queen. What would I be considered? I yeah, consider a butch queen. Why is you not considered? Because he got um. Uh, I've never. Well, actually, uh, you could uh, be considered forces on. I don't. I've never seen you touch into your like feminine side. You haven't. So no. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> 
I don't. I feel like I've only. You think he's, he's mass for mass set? I think you're more mass presenting. I could more mass presenting than me and you. Yeah, but for sure. But um, butch, <laughs> I still feel like he's a butch queen. I feel like so he's if, a butch queen. so what what goes what's is there levels to it? Like I mean, no. it's levels to be a bad bitch. I mean, <sighs> that part. <laughs> um, I don't think there's levels to. It. I just think like for me as somebody who. Um, I think as for me as somebody who I think I personally I like my balance but you know I guess everyone whatever that balance looks like for you mm-hmm. and like what your preference I don't even like that word preference what's another word because that's raggedy your to me type. your type or I mean it's so okay. I don't think I feel like it really depends on the so, person I though because I, I, I like some okay guys that are I have a type I don't think that's a negative thing to say I don't think it's a negative like thing that. to say but I mean is it rude to say you're not my type? No. Okay, yeah. it's, it's rude when you, like, bring in, like, other situations, like, oh, I don't want, like, we could bring it back to the archives. No fats and no fems. No like, fats, that's no fems, that's like, no druggies, no nothing that's like, like that. Okay, so what's your preference rooted in, sweetheart? That's why. Or your type. I mean, it goes back to how they were raised or what they've been through. You yeah, don't know. I don't really, you know. Like, I've, you like what I've you like. I've seen drugs so much in my life, I refuse to date anybody yeah. that does yeah. drugs. Yeah. That's just their preference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like what you like. You I understand like, like that. Like. I think it also depends on the person for me. As I've gotten older, I'm like, I really don't get into all that. Like, I think before when I was younger, I was like, I just, you had your own image of a, a person that you yeah, wanted to Yeah, I was like, date. let me get, I wanted, the, I wanted the trade or something. Like, And now it's like, ah. Uh, okay. No, yeah, like, I really would like, you. for me, I would like to, you want to be loved outwardly. So I think go to, like, dating. It's one thing mm-hmm. about hooking up, I guess. But mm-hmm. I think being in a relationship, you want to be loved outwardly and, like, freely. Mm-hmm. And that part. I think gay men that love themselves are able to do that to other gay men. That's important. We don't really necessarily see that a lot. I think that goes to like a lot. There's a lot of like situational, non-committal relationships, which maybe commitment isn't your thing, but I don't really see. It's not really prominent for me. I don't really see it a lot. I mean, shout out to you. You know, you've been in your relationship for a long time. But I don't. That's it's not normal. So like, I ain't been committed a long time. Ooh, but I mean, clock that's that, but we're where we hear uh, that. I mean, but. Commitment is something that you have to learn. Because of you or because of... Um, I, don't know. Yeah. For, I mean, for both of us. I mean, okay. we just have to... We, we we literally had to be in a position to learn each other and grow together. That's we both, fair. We didn't, we didn't get I live it. For that. We didn't learn these things from our parents, so... But we knew we was in a position we loved each other enough to where I will learn how to be committed to you. I will learn how to say no. I'm going to learn how to delete my jack. I'm going to learn how to delete... Okay. All of that. <laughs> and I'm going to learn how to just... Pay it to my eye, make my eyes just for you. I'm gonna figure it out. But you gotta be with that one person that want to do it. You didn't want to do it like an open set, like what? Like an open relationship. relationship. We thought about it. I mean, we, like we, we do other things with other people, but I mean, you said what? <laughs> oh, you you got third. Oh, yeah, have three times. I know that's right. It's by six. Fifth, six, fifth, six. Fifth. Six. You got six of them. Total of us. Oh, y'all had an orgy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's how y'all that's get cute. down. And- I mean, right. <laughs> I mean, but we're experience, we're experiencing Go our ahead. sexualities together. together. So I, mean, I like that. that. It's, it's you know relationship. Yeah, you was having fun. We just period. having fun. Yeah, no shade. That's well, it. so you had to download Jack for that, or you knew them? No, I didn't know them. Oh, uh, girl, you met them. At them. M- What's the bar down? At- Where's y'all? M- M- um, now some of this I is do, gonna be blurted out, right? Okay. I do want to. Yeah, they're gonna have to edit. <laughs> I don't want my boy. They're gonna my have to edit. Like, why would you go on there? Um, <laughs> I do actually want to touch back on what you're saying, like preferences. Um, okay. I do feel like everyone does have their preference, and your preference is your own. But I feel like when your preferences start coming from ignorance, no that's please. when I have to like look at you differently. Like you're you're like it's just being ignorant and not really like taking the fact of like someone just being an actual human being uh, right not that's why i had to learn how to check myself and i think as i just got older my your experiences changed so like now like the kind of guy I like now was way different from when i was like 22 23 um i think it's about how you respond to it because mm-hmm. even though you both just seen how ignorant i was to fleeting you didn't make you didn't put me in a position or make me feel as if i was stupid or i was rude or Mm-hmm. Or disrespectful, mm-hmm. you know. You just educate ex- somebody. You just educated me, so I think it's about how you how you Your perceive pro- how ignorant that person is. Because you be like, oh, you just ignorant. 
or maybe they clearly just don't know. Like, even though I'm in the gay world, I'm about to be married to a gay man, I still yeah, no. didn't know. Yeah, there's so, probably I mean, things I don't know either. Yeah, so no, I, mean, I like, I feel like I'm gonna know it's it. It's like all, tomatoes and model to each his own. To each his own, yeah. yeah. For real. Okay, like, you know, I, I mean, that makes sense. And shout out to the Butch Queens. Um, shout out to the Butch Queens. I, you know, I live for a Butch Queen, so I'm happy we didn't, I'm so really surprised you didn't know what a Butch Queen was. I'm still trying to learn the language. But do you feel that, like, was a maybe people in, like, like, smaller <laughs> cities, um, they don't have that exposure to, like, the gay community? When I moved to the Columbus, no lie, I didn't know what Tina was. Oh, girl, day that's not a Columbus thing. They don't do that. They, I don't believe that. I ain't going to say they don't do it, but right, Jerry, not in my that. circle. We don't uh, talk about uh, it. Uh, but in Columbus, it's so many more people <laughs> that do it. It's common. So when they say Whoa. you know Tina, but who in the hell is Tina? But you said in Dayton it's di- like it's well, real. Everyone is common. Well, I meant like in Dayton. I remember you saying to me like a while ago, like the it's not people aren't as social. Like yeah, gay no. community is not as social in Dayton too. Mm-hmm. Like around each other, like down to the club, down to the and yeah. stuff. I think here, I do feel like it's divisive in Columbus in terms of like when it comes. There's not really a space where. I guess that is designated to black queer people or yeah. people of color that are happen to be queer. But so we kind of occupy the same space, but there's still a lot of segregation between communities mm-hmm. um, that's present. And I bet I, when those spaces um, come together, I mean, I no shade, shout out to my Columbus gay bars, but it's very prominent to see people doing it in the bathroom and, Okay, you ain't never you, you go down to I ain't gonna name certain bars because because I was about to name one, but I ain't gonna say. I ain't it, gonna I'm name like, certain. Oh, y'all can take that out. <laughs> y'all can take. Uh, <laughs> every gay bar, not just. I one. never. She's classy. I don't really see that. I don't really. You know, um, I doubt it. I doubt every gay. Bar. A little classy. You can smell like piss in there at least doing oh. coke. Okay, well, yeah, blank blank them out though because yeah, we be okay. trying to use. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, you, this, I'm really surprised that it's not as common today because I don't feel like there's nothing else to do. But now shout out to that again. I mean, there's literally nothing to do. That's why the that's why for me, so, building Brothers in Unity and Dayton is so important because it's probably we happening. To, we don't we literally this. have no space where black people can come together and not be judged and just come together, have fun and be who we going to be. And I'm trying to. To break that stigma of whatever stigma they have in their own mind, to be like, you know, this is literally going to be a safe space. We can come together, and we're gonna have fun. We can do whatever. We're gonna eat, and we're just gonna congregate. Mm. Um, Shout out to the Brothers in Unity Dan. Yeah, yeah. So okay. that's the goal. Like I'm trying to get them to come outside. Okay. Shout out. Yeah, I could see that. I feel like it's kind of the same here, ish. Like, yes. Um, you know, it's hard. It's a lot of it, what it comes from, honestly, is the reality is like either whether it's people have. What, what, what did I say? You there? Round it up. Round it up. So you mean to close us out. OK, well, we're almost done. Hold on. I think it comes back to our conversation about stigma and um, like people and shame and like those interpersonal relationships. I think sometimes these programs are hard to build because people either have perceptions um of like what it's like what's gonna happen when you put a bunch of gay men together in a space um people have you know their own personal issues or you know whatever like their own perceived um what's it called unperceived perception child uh, perceived connotations, some I don't know, messed that up. Um, <laughs> perceived notions, that. something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, where you don't know what to expect. So it's actually creating actually intentional safe spaces where mm-hmm. people feel welcomed and it's like centric around like actually building community. Mm-hmm. But like drama and stuff that happens in every community, every space, everyone deals with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's there's a lot more. Sh- I guess maybe because we occupy that space and that's our lived experience. Yeah. Like we feel like it's real like dire and like it's always some drama or like it's always going to be a problem. And I think that we are our jobs. They're just like to break down that barrier. Um, and I think that that's why we've created Brothers in Unity in its inception, you know, and shout out to those who were doing the program prior. Um, 
the multiple people that I've worked with the entirety. When I was going to Brothers in Unity initially, I was going as a community member, and so was Chris. Same, yeah. Before we started working for the program and running the affinity space. So shout out to everybody who's like helped build the program and um, created sustainability. And I hope that we can continue to do so moving forward. And we enjoy the opportunities to experience that yeah. and create this space and utilize this platform as well. So shout out to Kiki with the bros. Kiki with the bros. With the bros. Brothers of Unity.